What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Save for More. I am Luke Goodish, as always, and today we need to talk about this book, Savage Son by Jack Carr. Before I say anything else, in case Jack Carr happens to end up finding this video, I have to first start off by saying thank you for your service, Jack Carr. Uh, he was a Navy SEAL, and he sacrificed for my freedoms to be able to read such books, so I have to just say thank you. Thank you for your service. And now, thank you for writing such cool books. Once a month, Jack Carr will put together a book list and make a video about it on YouTube. You can check those out to get some book recommendations in the thriller genre and military genre. One morning when I was trying to find something to watch while working out, I found one of those videos and I was interested in the idea of a Navy SEAL writing a fiction about Navy SEALs. So I uh, did some research on his books and I came across this one, Savage Sun. And the storyline was just absolutely perfect for me in research purposes um, for my rewrite of a book, Frozen Wrath, that I'm working on. My novel, Frozen Wrath, is in the same vein as Savage Sun, and I thought it would be very helpful for my rewrites. But real quick, for a plot rundown, think about this real quick. I'm not going to give you too much of the plot because I like I always say when I do book reviews, which was like one other time, but what I'm always going to say is go look it up yourself. But for me, what I'm going to tell you is think... Navy SEALs versus Spetsnaz, Russian Mafia, in a most dangerous game, first blood, cat and mouse, hunter hunted situation in, uh, in a wintry woodscape, if that's a word. It's, it's cool, man. Jack Carr himself says that this book was born of three other novels, uh, First Blood, Last of the Breed, and uh, Most Dangerous Game. That is how I came to have this book uh, in my hands. And once I had it there, uh, man, I devoured the whole thing in a day and a half. Uh, that's a thick boy. It's about, I think, 432 pages. Yep, 432 pages. And I, I did it in a day and a half. And that's not normal for me. Only happens when I read Brian Panowich. That kind of pace only comes out if I'm reading Bull Mountain, Like Lions, or Hard Cash Valley. But man, uh, Savage Sun did it. I couldn't put it down. I didn't want to put it down. It was one of those ones you're taking everywhere. You know, even the less convenient places, like uh, you're making dinner and you're just, you take it in the car with you and you're tempted at a stoplight to be like, maybe I could just get a page in. It was really like that for me. This is a part of a series, the James Reese series. Um, and this is the third one. There's four now. That's something typical for this genre um, of the sort of espionage or political thriller. I don't know what they're called. And honestly, this is a genre that I'm not familiar with, uh, that I'm not entrenched in, that I'm not versed in. I don't really touch this genre. I haven't read any Brad Thor. I haven't read any Tom Clancy. I haven't read any Vince Flynn. And I don't even know anymore. But I, I don't read this genre is the main point. But I want to recommend if you're that person who says, well, I don't read those kind of series, right? I don't read the Lee Child series and things like that. Um, the Jack Reacher, whatever, Jack Ryan. I don't read those. I would still say pick up, uh, pick up one of these books, especially this one. All I can do is speak for this one. But pick this book up for the following reasons. So for starters, I guess the big, big selling point um, that I would want to punch on immediately is a Navy SEAL writing about Navy SEALs. There's just something, there's something different about that. This, this author's paradigm, his perspective, it's one in a million, right? It's one in a million that you're not going to replicate. You're not going to get anywhere else. Um, so the authenticity and the battle sequences and the way this man writes action is out of this world. I thought that I had an okay grasp on writing action until I read this guy. I mean, that this was this wasn't just visceral and real in that sense where it's like oh oh that's gross and like gory and sort of violent which you know there are there are those aspects but no it, it's an authenticity that doesn't come without years of experience in actual battles not many of us have ever been shot at let alone been a navy seal uh going on operations for for years and years that perspective makes this book just soaked in authenticity and you're going to feel that it's in the pages you're going to be there in the mind of a seal and that that's an incredible perspective to see 
And he does it in such a way that uh, I was intrigued and into it and a part of this world before any of the sort of big action pieces happened with the main character. I told uh, Dom from the channel, I said, James Reese is like that coolest guy, right? That you just want to know more. You want to talk to some more. You want to hang out with, see what he's up to. It was like that for me. And I was intrigued with just getting to hang out with James Reese uh, before any of the action happened. I was sold. So then once the action hit, man, but I have to say there, there's a sort of caveat or warning that I would lay out and say that if you're not into that kind of action, not that it's indulgent, if you're the wrong audience, you may in fact see it as indulgent, but to me, this action was just satisfying. It's the equivalent of seeing a fantastic action film, one of those summer blockbusters, um, but, but right here in your hand and you're reading it. And that's a different experience when you match it with uh, the mind of a real Navy SEAL. Uh, he, he transplants you into that and lets you sort of see the world through their eyes. That's not something an action movie can do so well. But this one, it, it's a great, unique perspective that uh, can't, can't oversell. It was just a fantastic experience. I was feeling my heart race. I was bouncing my leg. I was fully involved, having to stand up. Literally, I was cheering at the pages at certain points. It truly becomes bad ass when things go down in this novel, and that is just so cool. But similar to that caveat of, oh, if you're not the person who likes that kind of action, this isn't for you. If you're not into the sort of political side of these types of novels and you don't like to see sort of you're not interested in political thrillers at all. Uh, there will be some lull points for you because that was me. I don't, I don't read this genre, like I said, but I don't typically ever gravitate toward anything that's super um, political. For me, those stories like The West Wing or anything that's involved with any sort of political and foreign affairs stuff, that it just doesn't interest me that that often. Uh, so there were two chapters in this towards the later section where we were just on this thrill ride. And then it takes a step back to go and see the president and see some of the briefings and meetings. And for some people, for the right people, I think you're going to love that. And it actually will enhance your experience for me. And maybe this is just because I need to work on expanding my novels. I write a lot of novella stuff. Um, I just would have streamlined it and had the events sort of play out um, in a quicker succession, but it wouldn't have been re as realistic, right? Because I don't want to put any spoilers, but those scenes were actually pretty necessary uh, for some real life ramifications that needed to be addressed. So I guess maybe I shut off my brain a little too much and wanted just the pure enjoyment, which uh, you got to be patient sometimes. But if you are down for an action and you don't mind a little bit of dash of politics in there, you are going to love this. And if that is your genre and you like that kind of stuff, man, then you have to pick up Savage Sun. I don't know what you're doing if you haven't picked up Jack Carr yet. Not that I'm anywhere uh, to talk. I don't even know uh, a Tom Clancy novel, so I'm sorry. This book got me interested in reading more thrillers. I picked up a Brad Thor, and on the recommendation of Jack Carr um, from one of his videos, I picked up David Morell's Brotherhood of the Rose. I want to try that trilogy because First Blood was my favorite novel before Bull Mountain. Um, knocked it off the throne because that book was incredible um, and same with this one same vibe where you just cannot put this thing down so look if you want to get inside of the mind of a navy seal and have a fantastic romp this one i have to say this was this was a change of pace for me a lot different than the books i'm used to the pros were different the storyline uh different and the focus was different but man this experience was fantastic, and I would do it again and again, and I actually cannot wait to pick up the next Jack Carr book. This was a fun, fun experience, and I could not wait to tell people about it and, and get someone else reading it. I'm going to be giving this to my dad when I see him next. It's just one of those books that you're going to enjoy and you're going to want to share. For me, I'm going to rate this an 8.5 out of 10 just because this isn't really my genre. A little bit of the political stuff was like, okay, enough. I like a little more flowery prose than what was offered in this book, but that's not, that's just a personal preference thing. So I have to say, um, as objectively as I can, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. But for me, 8.5. So there it is. That's the recommendation Savage Sun by Jack Carr. Get on it.